want to touch on crime because I suspect this will also come up in the questions. Of course, next week the legislature will come together to discuss uh, a series of solutions to crime. And so we've been working uh, closely with some legislators, with uh, talking with, well, anyone who will listen, uh, but certainly the, the governor's team and other, others. And, and here's, our, here's our broad advice. First, follow the data. If we don't have policies that are based on experience and data, but rather our knee-jerk reactions, we're going to end up in a place that we've been before. Louisiana, our high crime rate is not new. We have been at the top of the list. These are the bad lists. We never get to be top of the good list, but we're gonna get there. We've been at high crime rates for decades. And some of the proposals on the table We'll see what the bills are, we'll see where they end up. We fear we'll bring us back to the same old ways of doing things. And the reality is, right, if you remember uh, the quote often attributed to Albert Einstein, definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. The truth is we know from the data what works, what public safety projects or programs work. And look, we all want safer communities. Every one of us at some point has been touched by crime, almost certainly, whether it's us directly or a friend or family. And our communities are plagued by it. If we don't take bold action to really focus on two things, one, better data and transparency in the system so that we can make better and faster decisions. And the second is really focused on outcomes of our reentry programs. 95% plus of people who are going into incarceration are going to come back into our community. The question is, what will they, what awaits them when they get back? Is it no job, no family, no ID, no opportunity, and return to a life of crime? Or is it training, connectivity, engagement with the community, and ready to get back to work and get back into those communities? Those are the challenge, those are the questions we face. The state has already done a lot to focus back on reentry. We need more and better outcomes data so we know what's working and what's not. We need more and better transparency to figure out what programs are actually leading to the best outcomes and best opportunity. Finally, I'll mention sentencing. This will be a big topic, certainly of, of the special session debate and likely the follow-up. Uh, I suspect there'll be uh, a lot of discussion on crime in the regular session as well. In Louisiana, we have some of the wildest sentencing laws in America. We have uh, crimes that are very similar that have very different penalties. We have no streamlined system. And while this isn't in the call for the special session, we hope the legislature will really take up streamlining, organizing our, our sentencing system so that it's fair and transparent to everyone, to the victims and victims' families who deserve to know uh, when offenders are coming out and in what state, to the, uh, certainly to law enforcement, to the state, and to the offenders themselves. We hear stories all the time about them knowing their uh, release dates before the law enforcement does. Um, so we've got to do all of that while we're supporting our law enforcement, putting more and better trained uh, law enforcement officers on the street so that we can all work together to create a safer community here in Louisiana. Quick, yeah, thanks so much, Daniel. Um, I mean, there's a lot to talk about with the crime special session. And, you know, as you know, when we did the reforms in 2017, we released nonviolent offenders. <laughs> And we pumped the money into three pots, big <coughs> reparation funds, which everybody would agree is a good thing, reentry programs in a juvenile system. As we look at the bills coming, you mentioned some very good points. They're not following the data. It seems like there is a narrative out there that I think this coming session, the bishops especially going to try to support good data. Uh, we think reentry programs work. Um, we do it within the Catholic Charities Network. We, we go into prison before they leave, get them a job when they get out, uh, do family reunification. But um, I think there's going to be a heavy narrative that the reforms didn't work. And so I think we have our work cut out for us. So just know the bishops will be there. Um, so I just wanted to just throw that out. Thank you. And Tom was mentioning that the bishops also support good uh, database reforms and we're supportive. Uh, of the package of reforms in 2017, as, as was the Pelican Institute. Um, it, and I, I, I would agree. I think we've got to, to be really thoughtful about following the data. The Pelican Institute produced, produced a report 
um, last year that uh, what we wanted to do was understand the criticism was that some of the reforms that focused, again, as Tom mentioned, exclusively on nonviolent offenses, um, that uh, we wanted to understand, did that have any impact on the crime rate? We were all experienced uh, during the COVID lockdowns and the years following a spike in crime. We felt it, saw it in every community. We want to understand, is there any correlation? We hired an outside data firm to come in and run these numbers with an honest question. Did it, have, did it make a difference? But the findings were that there was no correlation between the spike in crime and the reforms that were made. Uh, it also found that Louisiana's spike in crime matched the spike in crime that were in every state in the country during the lockdowns. Whenever particularly young men are unemployed and roaming the streets, we're going to have problems. We see that throughout history. Um, secondly, uh, it uh, actually found that Louisiana's spike was just slightly lower than actually the national trends. That doesn't make it better, let me be very clear about that. Um, we all want lower crime, we all want less uh, recidivism and more public safety. Um, so we've gotta understand what the data are telling us. They're not always conclusive and we've gotta keep studying it. Um, but, but I agree, we've, we've gotta have a good, robust conversation about what the right policy should be. 